Well, bless his holy and majestic name. All right, we're going to go right on into this here. First of all, we're talking about operating the keys to the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of God. That's kind of like your parents saying, here are the keys to the car. And whatever car it is, Ferrari, Mercedes, Lexus, Cadillac, Buick, you name it, Bugatti, whatever the vehicle is, your parents or someone that owns those vehicles gives you the keys and say, here, here are the keys to the car. Well, what God has done spiritually, God has given us keys to the kingdom. I want to just kind of, you see these right here? These represent not all the keys. These only represent some of the keys. The keys unlock the promises of God. The keys lock the attacks and the activities of Satan. The keys of the kingdom are the authority of Almighty God. I'm going to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, we are going to go on a journey. And we're going to, I'm telling you right now, we're going to end the rest of our lives walking as the kings and the priests of God in the earth. We're absolutely learning how to operate in the authority. We're building great faith. We're literally walking in the agape of God. And those are some powerful things. And then we have the Father. We have the Son, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit working with us, tutoring us, teaching us how to master the things of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, prayer, praise, the Word of God, so powerful, powerful, powerful agents in your lives, ingredients in your lives to walk in victory over every attack of the enemy, over every negative thing in society. But you're going to have to start explaining some things to people. You're going to have to start teaching folks how God's government operates. I can't wait for Jesus to come back. I really can't wait. I'm looking so forward to Jesus coming back and setting up kingdom government in the earth. But what's awesome is, is that God says, I'm going to show you the keys to operate the kingdom. And then you now can turn around and in the situations in life that you operate, take my knowledge and begin to release my knowledge in those scenarios and situations. We're going to go back to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And I don't know about you. I'm cutting keys. Oh, my goodness, my, my prop's trying to fall apart on me. We can put that back together. Listen, I'm cutting the keys of God. I'm cutting the keys of revelation knowledge of Almighty God, and you got to start cutting those keys too. Because let me tell you something. God is answering prayer like it is absolutely like God is doing stuff now in the lives of believers the way God did things on that last plague in Egypt when God said, tell Pharaoh, you don't let my people go. I'm going to deal with them. He ain't going to feel good about it. And God told him, listen, if you don't let my people go, you don't took my son hostage because God called Israel his son. I'm going to do something to your son. So Moses went, told the truth, the truth of God, what God said. And he says, all right, put the blood all over the doorpost. Eat this Passover lamb. Have some fellowship with God, with your family. And then, then, those that don't put the blood over the door, the death angels coming through and going to kill the firstborn of every person in Egypt that doesn't have the blood covering their doorpost. We got the blood of Jesus covering our lives. But God told them, now I said, hold on, hold on. I done gave you Pharaoh ten times. I mean, well, actually nine. Nine times to let my people go. He was hard-headed. He wouldn't do it. Now, some people think that God kind of rigged Pharaoh's heart to say no to him. You know when they say, well, God hardened Pharaoh's heart? Well, when you break that word hardened down in the Hebrew and also in the Greek, literally what God did was when God came up against Pharaoh telling him what to do, Pharaoh rebelled and resisted God, would not obey God. Who was Pharaoh listening to? He wasn't listening to God, so he was listening to the other one, Satan. And Pharaoh thought that he was God. Okay, so Pharaoh was the number one operating power there. And he thought he was God and he had connection to satanic abilities and satanic manifestation. So now when God comes up there and says, let my people go, Pharaoh said, well, who's your God? Who are you? Now, 
God, Moses, I know you, but who's your God that I'm supposed to let him go? So God went through nine different manifestations of the power, the glory of the God that created the heavens and the earth. And when I say the God, I'm talking about the Elohim, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit operating. So now on the last one, God's given specific instruction. God's given specific instructions on what to do and how to do. Literally, God's revealing the knowledge of how the kingdom works in authority. The knowledge back then to Moses. And when they followed it, guess what? God said to them, go and get all of the wealth. Go and get all of the blessings. Go get clothes. Go get jewelry. Go get everything of wealth that you can carry that you want. And I know and I believe this, that in this last of the last lap, that God is saying to believers, if you operate these keys, I'm going to pour out on you blessing before you leave, before I come and get you, that you'll not have room enough to receive. I'm going to do some things in your life that's going to get the attention of all those around you, your family, your friends, and especially your enemies. They're going to see the blessing. They're going to see the increase. They're going to see the growth. They're going to see the manifestation of the blessing because of you being in the right place at the right time. So now when God told them that, they had to act in faith. They had to obey. It. They had to literally go out and get the stuff, knowing that God was for them, knowing that they had the government of heaven behind them, knowing that they had the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit backing everything that they was doing because they were doing it in accord and in obedience to the revealed knowledge of God. So now, here we are in 2024. You got a prayer list. You got some things that you want to do. How do you know you got to do your part? How do you know you can have keys, but if you don't stick the key in a lock and turn it, it's not going to lock or unlock anything. You got the key, but now you got to learn how these keys work. If you don't cut the key right and you stick it in a lock and it's not cut right, it's not going to turn the key. It's not going to turn that lock. So we're going to learn how to get, number one, the understanding of the cut keys. We're going to cut the keys with our faith, our praise, our obedience. And then we're going to know what each key, what each promise takes. Because there's a part that we got to do, and then there's a part that God's got to do. And God's already did their part. Amen? So, all right, Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Hallelujah. Look at this here. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, <clears throat> others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. He said unto them, and this is where we left off last time, But who do you say that I am? And this is so important in this day and age that we know who God is what God can do, how God does it, and then make it consistent, make it repeatable, make it so that in the name of Jesus, every time we call on God, we go knowing that our prayer is heard, knowing that our prayer is answered, and excited to see how God works it out. Oh, glory to God. This is powerful. And then he said unto them, who do men say that I am? And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, that knowledge, that information, that revelation, Jesus says in the next verse, you did not get that on your own. You are, first of all, blessed, Peter, because you said exactly who I am, what I am, and who sent me. I am, look what he's answered. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In that one statement, to acknowledge that says, I have observed you. I've come to a conclusion. I've drawn a conclusion that God has sent you, Jesus, that you are the son of God, that you are the manifestation of God in the earth. And, and, and Peter says, I don't care what the rest of the world is saying. This is what I know you to be. And God is saying this to us. As we study the word of God, as we begin to look at the word of God, God is saying to us, who do you say I am? In all of your church going, in all of your Bible studies, in all of your reading your Bible, in all of the gospel music that you're hearing, the revelation knowledge of God coming through those mediums, what conclusions have you drawn about Jesus Christ? Do you know the power that works with you? 
Do you know the access that you have in God? And that's what we're learning, how to access the keys to this kingdom, how to take in our lives, our everyday lives, in every scenario and situation, whatever comes up, whatever Satan tries to do, we have a key designed to unlock that thing. We have a key designed to literally lock Satan down. Woo, we need some movement in here. We just need a little bit of movement. Glory to God. So now, Peter gives this answer. He gets this revelation from Almighty God. Jesus says, verse 17, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. So now the Heavenly Father is revealing the knowledge of the kingdom, the knowledge of the power, the knowledge of the authority, the knowledge of how to stop Satan in his trap. Our enemy is not flesh and blood. Flesh and blood can be used. But our enemy is not flesh and blood. Our enemy starts with Satan. With Satan putting thoughts in people and they obeying them. Acting out satanic manifestations. So for us, we now have learned how to operate in godly manifestation. And guess what? We're working the keys of God. Oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, man. I showed this here last time. You see the keys up on this top ring. These are the ones that I got cut. I know where they go. I know how they operate. There's no debris in the middle, no doubt, no unbelief. When I stick these keys into whatever lock they unlock, it does what it does. Now, these keys down here, we saw out of the fact that some of these keys don't have any cuts in them, but they're promises. Some of these keys have partial cuts in them. They're promises, but they won't unlock nothing. They won't lock nothing. These other keys, which are almost cut, they're like 80% cut, but they still won't unlock because I haven't finished cutting them. I haven't finished developing to that level of faith and developing to that level of proficiency and obedience to where I know now they're totally cut. I've blown all of the debris out of them. When I blow all the debris out of these, y'all see this here? I'm going to move them to this ring right here until I get this whole ring filled. But I'll know where every key goes. I'll know what it unlocks. I'll know that it's all cut properly according to God's specifications. Now, oh boy, oh boy. You see all of these keys? I don't know if you can see this here, but you see all these keys? There's a bunch of keys in here. They all represent the promises of God. These are keys that haven't been cut yet. These are promises. You know, there are over 5,000 promises that God has made to us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, has made to humanity that many of us don't know all 5,000. Many of us may know all 5,000, but we're only operating in about 20 or 30 keys that's cut, that works, that you have so much confidence in that no matter how Satan comes at you, you know at the end of that conflict, he will not prevail. Can we keep on reading? Let's keep on reading. Because I like how Jesus is talking right here. Look at this here. He says, now, you are blessed, Peter, but the Father God in heaven, the Father God revealed this information to you, this knowledge. And look at verse 18. Oh, sweet Jesus. Better yet. Oh, man, I'm telling you, this is getting good. You got to believe this. Because, see, if you don't believe this, that's like having, you know, fragments in between your cuts. You got fragments in the cuts of the keys. You know what I mean? You stick it inside a lock. It's not going to go smooth. And it's going to now create a barrier, a blockage, so that when you try to turn that key, even though it's cut right, but you got debris from the keys, shavings from the keys that you didn't blow off, that you didn't buff off. Now you stick that key in there with some of those little small itty bitty shavings in there and you try to turn the lock, it doesn't turn. Now we want to blame the lock. We want to blame the key. We want to blame everything except us making sure that once we got the lock and once we got the key cut for the lock, that there's no shavings, no debris on our key. You ever notice, have you ever been to the key? Now, the modern day key cutters, you know what I mean? They, they stick it in, boom, 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 and they just. <laughs> but back in the day, they had that little wheel, and they used to put the key on, and both sides, they're getting all of those shavings off the key so that when you stick it in the lock, there's no problem. So a lot of times we can have the keys cut, but we got little debris in between the little grooves. We got to get the debris out. 
That's our job. That's not God's job. That's our job. See, we want God to do everything. But God says, no, you got to do your part, and then I'll do my part. All right, so watch this here. So he says, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter, thou art Petra, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Sweet Jesus. So the rock is revelation knowledge. He said to Peter, you are a small fragment of the big massive fragment or rock or boulder or cliff of the knowledge of who I am and why I came and what I do. Oh, hallelujah. We all are little Peters. In other words, Jesus called Peter not so much by his name on a regular basis. He called him Rocky. Called him Little Rock. What's up, Rock? What's up, Rock? Y'all know there's a rock in the natural. You know, the rock in wrestling. But we the rock in the kingdom of God. We little rocks in the kingdom of God. Woo, hallelujah. And we are a part of, we are fragments of the big massive rock of knowledge of who Jesus is, how Jesus operates, and who Jesus the people. Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at this here. And this is what I love about this verse 18. He says, I'm building my church on the knowledge of who I am. I'm building my church on how to perform that knowledge. I'm building my church on how to prevail against Satan, prevail against Satan's kids, prevail against satanic circumstances, how to prevail. Now, God is saying to us, I'm putting you in a position to prevail. Oh, sweet Jesus. And this is something that we have got to realize and accept and then begin to stand up and say, oh, heck no. Satan, you have been put in a lane that says you can't prevail over me. So if I do my part, if I cut my keys, and if I get the debris out my keys, did I get that? That was pretty good. If I get the debris of shavings, the debris of dust out my keys, the debris of bad attitude, the debris of ungodliness and un goofy behavior, if I get those de ooh, those debris out the cuts of my keys, then I'm going to have a life that flows in every situation I will be able to lock, every situation I will be able to unlock, I will be able to break Satan's ability to come in and dissolve. Look at this here, look at this here. He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, against the church. Now watch this here. Then he turns around, verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever thou loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Oh, sweet Jesus, thank you, Lord. Okay, now, oh, oh, oh. I want to deal with this binding and loosing real quick. Because he says, I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you the ability to bind and loose. Bind and loose what? Bind and loose whatever Satan is doing. But he says, you got to believe. He says, now you have the knowledge. It's not enough to have the knowledge. You now have to have, we now have to have the authority to execute, to utilize that knowledge. This is what I love about the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God makes us aware of who God is, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Makes us aware of who Satan is. Makes us aware of who angels that stayed with God are. Makes us aware of the angels that follow and follow Satan are. Makes us aware of good and evil. Makes us aware of godliness and ungodliness. Makes us aware of how to succeed. Makes us aware of how to walk in health. I mean, the knowledge of God covers everything in life. And God turned around and said, I give you the keys, the authority. If you can find a promise, I'll give you the key to unlock. If you can find a promise and, and build that great faith for the promise, just trust that I can do it. God says, I will give you the authority and I will put you in a position to prevail. All right, look at this here. Look at this here. Look at this here. Let's look at this word prevail real quick. And then, you know, God is a rewarder. Oh, yeah, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek, right? So now, 
This word prevail in the Greek, I'm just going to give you the, I'm going to give you the definition. There's four definitions. You've got to write these down. Look at this here. Number one, to overpower. So in other words, God says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, shall not overpower you. Catus cool is the Greek word. Number two, to be strong to another's detriment. In other words, the gates of hell and what Satan is doing will not be strong against you to your detriment. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter what conflict you're facing, no matter how tough and challenging it is, when you know the keys, when you know how to operate the keys, when you know that those keys are cut right, and don't you know them keys are cut right? How many of y'all got some keys that y'all know is cut right? That means every time you get in conflict with anything, any challenging situation, the knowledge of God comes. The knowledge of God is revealed to you. You sit there and say, oh, God, how am I going to deal with this? And then all of a sudden, bam, a thought rises up in you. Where do you think that thought comes from? When it's a gotten thought. That's the Father God revealing to you the thing that you need to overcome whatever is coming against you. And God said, you are, listen, you are in a position where Satan will not be strong to your detriment. He will not overpower you. Number three, he will not be superior in strength. Why is that? Because we tapped into the strength of the Lord. Who can finish this scripture? There's a donut waiting for you. The joy of the Lord. There you go. All right, she said it first and said it before. The joy of the Lord. Can you see now why joy and knowing what joy is from God's perspective is so vitally important? Because <laughs> Satan is doing his best to bring unjoyful things in your life. He's doing his best to create drama in your life. And he'll use whoever he can. And they know they're doing it. But God said, I'll give you the wisdom to stick the key of truth into their thinking. Unlock that thinking. Unlock that negativity. And then they get to choose to walk in freedom. If they don't choose to walk in freedom, they'll stay bound. But you now will not be, pre you will not be prevailed on, prevailed over, because of their <clears throat> allowing Satan to use. <clears throat> is that a good position to be in? That's a great position to be in. That's a position like whatever comes, whoever comes, because you have direct connection with the Father God, direct connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, direct connection with the Holy Spirit. In any situation, in any circumstance, all you got to do is call on the God of Revelation. When I say revelation, it's a revelation knowledge of how to prevail. Look at this here. Number four, prevail. The gates of hell, Satan, will not be able to overcome you. Oh, my God. He won't be able to overpower you. He won't be strong to your detriment against you. He will not be superior in strength, and he will not be able to overcome you. Why? Because you are the church. You are the called out ones of Almighty God. And you are operating the keys of the kingdom. What are the keys designed to do? Give you authority, give you the ability to bind and loose. Sweet Jesus. Let's look at this word bind. The gates of hell shall not prevail. The word bind is the Greek word deo. Deo. Here's what it means. It means five things. Y'all ready? Number one, to tie. So when Satan comes against you in any area of life, when he sends people against you in any area of life, you now take a moment and say, Heavenly Father, you see this? Lord Jesus, you, you see this? Holy Spirit, you see this? Because I see it. Now, now, Lord, I need your wisdom. I don't want to, I don't want to get satanic in response to them. But God. How do you want me to deal with this? In that moment, you ain't even got to say that out loud. Because, see, you can talk to God from your heart and not utter a word. How many of y'all know you can do that? You just think it. You think it. And God hears it and releases the power and releases the knowledge for 
you to be a prevailer and not be prevailed on. See, when he says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church, in other words, we can flip that around. That's like a reversible belt. <laughs> any of y'all got any reversible belt? Black on one side, brown on the other side. Blue on one side, tan on the other side. Or in other words, watch this here. Look, God says, look, 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 look. You are to prevail over the gates of hell. They won't prevail over you, but I've ordained for you to prevail over them. Did I say over them? I mean over them. That over and them getting too close together. I have ordained power so that in anything, any endeavor that can be deemed godly, God says, I have ordained knowledge and strength and power of the Holy Ghost based on the knowledge I have ordained that to overcome to overpower to Satan's detriment to literally break him down and break everything he sent against you to break it down. Because you got the keys. Because you the church. You got the keys. You the church. And Satan will not prevail against you nor any of his tactics. And you are to prevail over him in every one of his tactics. Is that good news or is that good news? That's great news. So he says, I give unto you the power, the ability to bind. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. So in other words, God is saying, Heaven backs you. Heaven's got your back. But you, you, you gotta you gotta you gotta keep that knowledge going and coming and flowing. You gotta keep that prayer activity up and consistent. You gotta keep that praise activity up and consistent. You gotta keep that, you know what I mean? All of those spiritual things. Can I ask y'all a question? This is gonna be a dumb question. It's gonna probably be the dumbest question you've been asked on Sunday morning. Especially this Sunday morning. All right? So let's say the devil's walking across the street, coming to your house with a bag full of troubles and misfortunes. And he wants to put all of them on you. And you in your car, running, keys in the ignition, foot on the gas. But all you have is a quarter tank of gas in your car. Can you run the devil over with a quarter tank of gas in your car? Okay. Give me some that. You, you now, Satan coming down your street with a bag full of misfortune and trouble. You sitting in your car. Right? You got a half a tank of gas. Can you run him over with a half a tank of gas in your car? All right. What if you was on empty? Could you run him over? With your gas tank, not empty, but on empty. You know, on E. Could you? Yes, of course. Now, see, all cars are made that when that needle gets to E, you still got about two to five gallons of gas still in there. So even on E, devil comes down with a bag full of misfortune, bag full of troubles. Even if you're on E, you can still run that devil over. Now, if, if, if your tank is on full, I think y'all know where I'm going right now. Same devil, same bag of misfortunes, same bag of troubles, coming down your house, your street, you sitting there with your key in the ignition, car is running full tank of gas. Come on, do I have to ask it? I don't think so. You can run him over with a full tank of gas. You can run him over on E. When your needle is on E, have you ever felt like you're on E in the battles of life, dealing with the misfortunes and the troubles that Satan brings your way? Well, let me say, I got some good news for you. There's only one difference between your tank of gas being on E, quarter tank, half tank, 
three quarters of a tank or a full tank. You just ain't, you just ain't spending enough time at the pump. You know, you know, some people spend two or three minutes in prayer a week. Some people spend two or three minutes in praise a week. God doing all kind of miracles and blessings. They only do it like two or three minutes worth of praise and prayer. They only in their Bible maybe one or two scriptures a week. They only eat. But they can still run that devil over. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. And that's what God has promised. That's what you got. Me, the only other difference between running the devil over on E as opposed to running the devil over on full, maybe not y'all, I don't know. But when I got a full tank of gas, well, my confidence level goes all the way. I got three quarters of a tank of gas. Depending upon where I'm going. I only got a half a tank of them still. But at a full tank of gas, oh, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you right now, my whole demeanor changes with a full tank of gas. The pitch in my throat. Everything. When you full of the spirit, the way you deal and prevail against the Satan, against the Satan, against, and he is the adversary, changes. When you were three quarters, you're like, I said, well, I can whoop you. Three quarters, you, you're going to get whooped all day. You got a full tank? Oh, Satan, you're going to get whooped all day and all night. You got a half a tank? Okay, Satan, you're going to get whooped a half a day. But you're going to get whooped. You got a quarter tank? All right, I'm going to whoop you, and then I'm going to have to go and pray some more. I'm going to get built up. So on and so forth. You out here? Satan, I know the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to whoop you just for a little bit, then I'm going to pray some more, a couple of minutes, then I'm going to whoop you again. It's only going to be a two-minute whooping because that's all I got built up. Whatever you got built up, you're going to be able to last long. Bind. Here it is. Give you the power to bind. To tie. So the first thing Satan comes against you with misfortune and calamity, first thing you do when you say, Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Literally, you just, in the spirit release, you release the power of God to tie Satan. Isn't that comfort? Isn't that good to know? But you got to believe it. See, if you don't believe it, you say, no, I don't work. I don't believe that. Okay, you just let Satan loose. Mm -hmm. Number two, to fasten with chains. Now, I didn't make these up. This is what Jesus said to the disciples. You know, I, I probably asked about, oh, God, just one-on-one. -on -one. I probably asked about 30 people last week. Excuse me, sir. I have a question for you. I don't think you're going to see this one coming. But uh, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? And I got all kinds of answers. And I focused on the no's. I got a lot of yeses, but I focused on the no's. One guy said no, and I said, it's not too late. And I walked off. Boom. <laughs> Left him there. I said it to a Chinese cat. I said it to some Indians. I hit them all. Some white folks, black folks, I hit them all. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, excuse me. Need me know this uh, But are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Of Nazareth? N not of Brazil. Not of, not of, you know what I mean? You got to get specific. One lady looked at me and went, yeah, yeah, I I'm very spiritual. God bless you. Some people you just got to feel them out. And when you deal with a real negative one, that you can, you can sense the hostility. You just look at him and say, God bless you. The day is still young. And just walk off smiling. And that power you release impacts them satanic spirits that's got their mind all messed up. Come right now. Been, I, I'm telling you, I've been having fun with it. I've been having fun with it. Not in a, uh, you know what I mean, kind of like being irresponsible. But it's just been amazing to watch the response. Would you all want to try to do it right now? I know you have. Watch this here. Number, number three. Do you all see the progression here? To throw into chains. Now, I'm very imaginative. My mind, you know what I mean, goes to accord with the scripture. So when I see that hole or bind means to tie, in my mind, I see Satan getting tied up. Then the second definition makes me a little bit happier. 
to fasten with chains. No, not with rope. Not with string. But with chains. And God says, now when you believe this, you will receive this. When you believe this, it activates in the spirit realm. From the physical, natural realm. And you as God's agent, you as God's church, when you put chains on that situation and speak it, doesn't matter what it's looking like, speak it in Jesus' name. Satan don't want you to know that you don't put chains on. He's trying to break the chains, but he can't break the chains because your faith in God and God's promise is too strong. And your knowledge on how to operate the keys is too strong. He can't come in there and get you doubting anymore. He can't come in there and get you afraid anymore. He can't come in there and get you full of anxiety anymore. No, I got keys, partner. I got the keys of Almighty God. And I believe in these keys. And when you turn that lock, watch this here. It gets better. It gets better. Bind. Fourth definition. You ready for this? Now, now, when they put this in here, when I first read it, I said, okay, God, how, how am I going to fit this in? And the Lord just said, leave it just the way it is. I'll give it to you when you get there. So here it goes. Ready? He gave it a little bit. You know what I mean? Early. The fourth definition of deho, to bind, the fourth definition, this is, this is, this is, Satan is said to bind a woman bent together by means of a demon as his messenger taking possession of the woman and preventing her from standing upright. Y'all read that? Y'all read that story in Matthew? In Luke? In the gospel? So the woman, she's bent over like this here and walking all her life like this. Can you imagine trying to walk like this all your life? But you can't get up because it's not that you have scoliosis. You have a demon, evil spirit sent by Satan that has possessed you and put you in this kind of position. And you can't get out. And you won't get out. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about this woman. You won't get out. You can't get out. Medical science can't fix this. Therapy can't fix this. There are some things that attack us that therapy ain't going to fix. That medicine can't fix. But Jesus can. But to, ex to access Jesus, we got to develop great faith for some stuff. Great faith in what the Father has promised. Great faith in what Jesus has promised. Great faith in what the Holy Spirit has promised. Whose choice is that? Ours. But you know what Satan has got us thinking? I believe it. When I see it. You know, Flip put that on us for years. And God says it works opposite that. You believe it, then you'll see it. One of my sons just told me this morning, this, we prayed this, and the Holy Spirit told me to drop this on him a year ago. We're riding and talking. And at his job, he was talking about him getting into management, him getting into a training position. They had no position like that available. My son said, I don't know, Pop. They don't even have that available. I said, well, you know what is out there? When you're ready for it, watch God work. He told me this morning, Pop, they came and offered me a position to be a trainer. They created a position. And y'all don't understand what that does to my faith. Oh, please tell me what you are uh, believing God for so I can have my faith through it. I want to see God do miracles. Give me some fodder to preach with. Dio, this is a good filler, man. I told y'all last time, my brother, blood brother, now I got, boy, he was going dialysis for two years, doing everything they told him to do. They said it's a 15 to 20 year process to get a kidney. The first time when I reconnected with my brother, I didn't know what he believed. I didn't know if he was an atheist, agnostic, or he was a believer. In the process of time, just feeling him out, just kind of throwing loose, seeing, seeing how you respond to him, come to find out he's a believer. And so after I found out he was a believer, we talked, and I still throw some word on him, see if he received it or not. And he was receiving. And 
three weeks ago, the Lord said, ask him if he believes that I can accelerate him getting a kid. And it just so happened that we were teaching on acceleration, ending that series in reality check. And so I asked him. And he was like, he was quiet first. And he said, yeah. I'm praying. I says, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for accelerating this process. Get him a young kid. Get him a perfect match. Cause everything to work right. Three weeks ago, he called me up crying. Daddy, I just got a call from my husband. Some young man up in Missouri was in a car accident. They said, come now. They called the dialysis people. They said, don't let him get to the dialysis today. Tell him to come to the hospital. He said, Eddie, I'm on my way to the hospital. God accelerated that thing. Then I found out that my wife and my kids was praying for a call. You can't have that many people praying for you that trust God, that know how to operate the keys of the kingdom, that have great faith, and praise God before they see it done, and God not do it. That's just impossible. In other words, you and I have the ability, if the situation can't be accelerated, God can accelerate it because of your prayer and your praise and your study and knowledge of the keys of the kingdom and your staying focused and consistent. Sweet Jesus. And now we're talking about walking in agape love. Oh, let's get on with this here. So if Satan can bind a woman and she couldn't get free. Only Jesus could set her free. Y'all know what Jesus said. Jesus walked up on this woman and said, Woman, thou art loose. T.D. Jakes built the platform of his ministry on Woman, Thou Art Loose. Teaching that story. You're going to be bound no more. And I'm speaking that to every one of you. And every one of you, Jesus has given us the keys. And I say, you are loose. Be loosed in the name of Jesus. And in your life, Satan, be bound. If Satan could bind this woman with a demonic force that only Jesus could break, God says, ain't nothing that Satan can bring against you that I can't break. But that's, that's good. But there's something better than that. What's better than God breaking demonic forces over your life? Demonic misfortunes and attacks. Satanic attacks coming through people. What's better than God breaking those things off of your life? I'm not talking. Huh? You doing it! Oh, sweet Jesus! You doing it! Not in that babyhood state of Christianity. To where, God, God, God. No, God says, I'm elevating you to walk as my ambassadors, to walk as my police, to walk. Come on. Now, when people are at that level, you know what our job is, who are beyond that level is? You know what our job is to do? Show them that you can walk in a greater dominion and prevail over Satan. You can walk in a greater manifestation of the power and the presence of God. And it may feel weird right now. It may feel just foreign right now. But trust me, if you'll do these things, that feeling will die. That feeling will be conquered by God answering your prayer. Sweet Jesus. Whew. Now, I'm, I'm a certified professional golf instructor. So I deal with people. And the things I be showing them, just like the things that were shown me, were very weird feelings. Awkward to change my swing. But they said, this is proven. Just do it. And I had to make the decision to change my swing from a two-plane swing to a single-plane swing. And when I made the decision to follow the instruction, the ball went further, straighter, and less impact on my back. And the ball just goes. But it felt very awkward. It felt very uncomfortable. 
But once I got past that awkward and that uncomfortable stage because I was used to doing it my way and the way I had learned to do it, but when I found out a better way, I have you know there's always a better way. And God's way is the best way. And we got to get used to that because we've been so conditioned to do it Satan's way, to do it the world's way. And so now, like with the kingdom, if you now operate those keys and release faith and release praise and shout and thank God before you see anything done, God says, that's great faith. But to do that, well, if you do it around some ungodly, ignorant folks of the things of God, and when I say ignorant, I'm not trying to, I'm not being mean. I'm just being factual, and that's the word that I choose. I'm not being mean, but when you're around spiritually ignorant folk who think they know what they're doing, it is up to you to say, well, that's not how God does it. Notice you didn't say, that's not how I do it. From an origination standpoint. I do it because it works. I do it because God said do it. And I'm not perfect at it, but I'm getting better every day. That's going to be what you got to say to them. And then you look at them and say, don't look at me. I didn't down the cross for you. Don't look at me. I didn't live the Ten Commandments for you. I'm doing my best to live them now. I got to carry my own cross. But it's Jesus who you need to interface with. Not religion. Not Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, Hinduism, Jesus Christ, him. Get to know him. And you can't say, how do I do that? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You literally see him operating the keys to the kingdom. In every different circumstance and situation and every misfortune that Satan brought against him, tried to prevail against him, every trouble that Satan brought against him to try to prevail against Jesus, you see Jesus deal with all of those things, all those attacks from Satan directly. Woo! Glory to God. I'm preaching good right now. From Satan's kids. Woo! Man, this is saucy right now. And it's the knowledge. You see Jesus operate even against circumstances and the elements. Look at this here, number five. You ready for this? Now, the first four to tie, that's number one, talking about day hope or to bind. This is the authority that God has given us. Number two, to fasten with chains. Ooh, that's getting specific. Number three, to throw into chains. I, I, I really like that one because it's, it's one thing to fasten somebody in chains, but this, 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 can you picture just throwing somebody into some chains? That's what you're doing to Satan every time you break his body. And you get the example of Satan binding this woman by means of demonic spirits, which are messengers for Satan, they took possession of this woman, but Jesus came and broke Satan's authority and power and dominion over this woman, broke the messenger of Satan, that demonic force that got this woman all bound up and messed up. We don't know what she did to contribute to that situation. Because how I many know you can't get bound by a demon until you contribute to it? Ouija boards, tarot card readings, those open the door, those open the door for satanic intervention on a greater platform in people's lives. And they do this thing unknowingly. Wearing satanic symbolism, these authorize the dark side to manifest more. And people don't know it. And the ones that do know it, Satan is like pumped us into silence. Because people get their feelings hurt when we tell them the truth. And that's why we got to be bold and strong and loving and no nonsense. These are the facts. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. But these are the facts. And then when people step out of line and get out of line, put them in line and love. Give them the truth and the facts. And hold on. You went too far to the left. And now you need to check that. Because that thing has some effects. Does that make sense? 
Somebody step on your foot. And then they do it by accident the first time, you cut them some slack. But when they do it on purpose, because you didn't check them, now you got a bigger situation to deal with. And they're going to get worse. Look at this here, last one. To forbid and declare to be illicit. Illicit. No, no, no. You're not doing this no more. We're not having this. Oh, sweet Jesus. Look at this here. Look at this here. Look at this here. We've got to be able to tell folks in Jesus' name in a loving way that's bringing negativity and misfortune and trouble into our lives. Stop doing that. This is what it's called. And it's painful. And it's causing me to think about things I don't want to be thinking about. So I need you to stop that behavior. Illicit usually refers to something that is not morally proper or acceptable. So when folks is bringing misfortune or they're doing stuff and you know it's morally wrong, it's not proper, the world says it's cool. But we are operating the key to the kingdom of God. And I close with this statement, this powerful statement. About four weeks ago, we were talking on being unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Being unashamed of the truth and to stand up and speak truth to people. And we said that it's not what you say, but it's how you say it. How you say it doesn't mean you're going to try to say it without hurting your feelings. Because how many know people that get their feelings hurt for truth is only because they don't want to hear the truth? They don't want to hear truth, so they rebel against it. Now, that's not to say that we're to go out and start trying to hurt people's feelings. No, we're not. But we need to bring that truth in the most loving way possible. And as we bring that truth in the most loving way possible, guess what happens? In the name of Jesus, now the Holy Spirit can go in and can eat us in the name. So we glorify God. And then second of all, Showing up and revealing what? Oh, how does it feel to have the keys? How does it feel to prevail over the misfortune and the trouble that Satan brings? And we thank God for giving us that knowledge. For that sets us free. You shall know the truth. Father, we just praise, worship, and magnify the holy and majestic name. We thank you for bringing these truths to reality in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, that as we stand and begin to find Satan's activity, and as we begin to dissolve all of his abilities through your word, we thank you for the swift, immediate manifestation in the most accelerated format possible in our physical reality. Oh, God, we covenant with you, and we say to you, Father, we say to you, Lord Jesus, we say to you, Holy Spirit, every prayer answered that physically manifested, we'll give you praise, glory, and honor, and we will share it with our friends, our enemies, and our family. And we thank you for being near to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you.